Hey, what's up? This is Kevin from Kevin's Barbecue Joints, and this man needs no introduction. It's Daniel Vaughn from Texas Monthly Magazine, but I do want to do a short little introduction because this one, of course, is focused on the Texas Monthly Top 50, which comes out in the November issue, which means that we'll get the list in October. But the main focus of this was to be the Texas Monthly Barbecue Club and why it's important and how much it is to sign up and what you get out of it and the fact that there's a little hint I'll give you that you will get the list a little bit before everybody else and you get a physical copy and a digital copy of the magazine for a year so you'll get the issue on your doorstep so it's very important so I'll have links below to all that I also want to talk about the Texas Monthly Barbecue Festival which is going on the road to Tyler, Brownsville, and Lubbock which is really cool totally different than they've ever done we of course get into a bunch of different stuff tangents that I always get into. We even talk about Devil's Tower in Wyoming, which was in Close Encounters, and his trip with his son, and the Wichita Mountains in Oklahoma. Also, what it's like to be Daniel Vaughn now, as opposed to what it was like to be Daniel Vaughn then in regards to barbecue and traveling to barbecue joints. I think you guys are going to really love this. Daniel, I can't thank you enough for taking the time. This is our fourth interview. And I think that's one of our best, and I think you'll really get a lot out of this. If you're digging these, please subscribe. That way you don't miss out. I have a website at kevinsbbqjoints.com. Tons of additional stuff. But at the end, stay safe and visit your local barbecue joint. How are you today, Daniel? Good, good. I'm, I'm doing great. Taking a little break from barbecue. That's uh, <laughs> doing this or just in general you're taking a break? Oh, just in general, yeah. I mean, I've been out on the road for the Top 50 search for you know, several months now and really hitting it hard over the last few weeks and, uh, uh, finally wrapped that up. Um, oh, we've, cool. we've got our list in. And so I'm taking a little break and trying to, trying to get to a place where I'm really craving barbecue again. <laughs> Cause that's a, that's a massive endeavor. And as, as we just spoke off camera, like there's, there's a lot of pressure. Like it's a different kind of pressure. When we first, our first interview that we did was right before the last one, I think it might, maybe it just came out or it was just coming out around that time. And then when we did another interview, I think it was the top 25 new barbecue spots. Right. Yeah. So what is it? What's this, what's the pressure? What does it feel like for you now? I know you're, you're trying to you know, not think more about barbecue, but what does it feel like? Does it feel good that do you feel satisfied? Yeah. That yeah. I mean, I, I feel certainly satisfied with our process. Uh, you know um, we have a big team of people who go out there um, trying to search and scout, but you know, there, if you're, if you're going to make it on the top 50, um, it's because of a visit that I had there, um, along with the, the data that we collect from the rest of our tasting team. So mm -hmm. yeah, there, there's nobody that's going to be in the top 50 that I haven't been to. Uh, there's, I think there's some confusion about that. Uh, I think what's been funny over the last few weeks is that everybody assumes that every photo I post um is a top 50 place like i've seen guesses of the top 50 uh -huh. that are just like a copy of my uh instagram over the last few weeks and you know it's that's not the way it works exactly i mean i'm out there toward the end like really trying to hone in on who's going to be in our top 10 we will have a, a ranked top 10 again this time around like we did uh, back okay. in 2017 and you know there's also you know if you want to take some terminology from March Madness. I mean, there's people on the bubble, you know, there's uh, some different barbecue joints that um, are sort of like, are they, are they in or out? Um, you know, the get into the one through 40 is actually pretty simple. It's um, weeding out that sort of like, that makes you know, sense. The 40 through 70, like <laughs> which ones of those, because, uh, you know, as everyone has reminded me um, throughout this search, everybody in barbecue, you know, we are at a time in Texas where mm -hmm. we have more great barbecue joints than we've ever had. Yeah. Uh, so many new places have opened um, since our 2017 list. Heck, so many new places have opened since our my uh, 2019 list of the 25 yeah. best new barbecue joints. Which is crazy. Yeah. So, you know, that, that part of, of sort of weeding it down does get painful. I mean, I, I know a lot of these people. I know that I also know that a lot of these restaurants are great. Um, they're just there's only 50 spots. And so so and I think that's been a lot of uh, conjecture as to whether you're going to, to expand it to like 75 or 100 or change the way that you're doing it. You're going at it essentially the same way that and I didn't listen to uh, yeah. Sandler's interview because I wanted to have this fresh 
in for yeah me. it's it's the top 50 so there's going to be 50 places okay. and uh we do have a list of honorable mentions okay the honorable mentions um in the past have been chosen more on like that they have an item that really stood out uh now the honorable mentions are more chosen as like these are here's a lot of other really great barbecue joints to visit too that makes sense. that's good uh, yeah so, and many of them doing lots of great barbecue uh not just one or two items so yeah the that's really the only way that's going to look a little bit different this time around we'll still have the barbecue passport so yeah i was going to ask if there. you have that like a scavenger yeah. hunt issue <laughs> yeah i mean it was a scramble to the end uh trying to find a sponsor for it uh but we did so coca-cola came on as a sponsor oh wow so it, it uh, was, you know, I was just really pleased the fact that we're able to do it again. That's uh, fun. I, I know that there's some people out there who last time around, they were just really trying to fill it out to get all the prizes from, from Yeti that we had last time around. And I know there's a lot of other people though, that just really enjoyed having that list of 50. Mm-hmm. And, uh, so, you know, some people took a year, two years, three years, um, to get through it. And, you know, I think, uh, whether there's, you know, whatever the prizes are, what they're, you know, what there's a, what prizes are up for grabs. I think the biggest one is for a lot of people is just pride and having yeah. gone to all 50 of them. And the experience, the ability to experience it. And you're creating a roadmap for people because a lot of people love to have a guide or at least have some yeah. sort of direction. And as you've discussed, and as many people just, there's just, there's so many great places and there's so many really good and then there's really there's great and not sure they're exceptional but there's so many choices and how do you manage that and when and when someone says i'm going to to austin or going to houston or going to dfw like how do you like it's it, it is not it's not something like you could say oh these yeah. two places you have to balance there's a dozen maybe or eight or it's yeah it's it's it is really crazy now does with your phone i was i was asking off camera too like how is how is your social media? Like, how do you, with your Twitter and your Instagram, are you muting stuff like your DMS or your, are they crazy? Like how? No, I don't mute anything. Um, you know, I've gotten a few messages here and there from different pit, pit masters with, uh, I don't know, just some strange messages, um, you know, <laughs> sending me their resumes and oh, really? things like that. Um, uh, you know, it, as I've, tried to tell some of them like none of this helps <laughs> in yeah. fact it it uh it it might be a hindrance but um or if anything it's a hindrance but pretty much it's not going to help you you know so uh, yes i've been getting personal messages and emails and, and you know lots of arguing too over and speculation about what's going to mm-hmm. be on the list and you know i welcome all of that i mean that's why i have this job is because people are so passionate about barbecue and there is so much to argue about yeah then there's those that like question my integrity and you know the the they go straight to the, like the laziest critique of of any food writer which is oh so people must pay you to yeah, get exactly, on this yeah. and no like come oh. on and also too you're and like people might not know you are paying your wet like you guys are paying even though it's I'm sure you expense it, but this is something like yeah. you're you're not you're paying for every meal. And you had said something like this was I think I read that you said this is one of the most expensive issues, right? Yes, it's the most expensive issue we make because yeah, we pay for our barbecue, we pay for the we pay the different team members for all their travel and my travel as well. Um, you know, my uh, I mean, my expense report for <laughs> August was fifty five hundred dollars. That's an expense report of food and, of food and, and basically job. mileage. That is yeah. crazy. I mean, we spend a lot of money to, to make sure it is a list that, that has integrity. Um, you know, we don't expect to put a list out that everybody agrees with, but we know that we're putting out a list where we have those firsthand opinions um, and recent firsthand opinions of, of putting all this yeah. whole list together. So, you know, there's never going to be a, a list of 50 great barbecue joints in Texas that everybody's going to agree on. Yeah. So there is no one right list, but you know, there is the list that we feel comfortable with based on what these places are doing right now. And you I know, think that it, didn't, didn't you or Pat mention that you guys in the past would get that, like, I don't know, because of COVID, did you guys, do you guys all get together in a boardroom and finalize this or is it a zoom call or how? Yeah. It's more phone calls, phone calls, zoom calls. I mean, for the past, like, um, 
past two weeks of the search, I was calling Pat Sharp pretty much every day. Yeah. She was going to check out different places for our top 10 search, as was I. And some of them we went to together. Um, so we had lots of conversations pretty much daily just about uh, what we were finding, what was surprising, what wasn't surprising. Yeah. And, you know, now we've uh, we've gotten in all of the write ups uh, for each one of them. Well, there's a few stragglers out there, but that's still for, <laughs> for the most part, we've gotten in all the write ups from all the different team members. And we're about to go through and edit all that. And uh, yeah. Um, when does it come out? It comes out in the November issue. So that part of it is a little strange. Like this has been a summer issue. It's usually our June issue. Yeah. So it usually comes out in mid-May. Uh, this time around, it'll come out in you know, mid to late October. I don't think I have an actual date for when it will be released. But yeah, uh, I mean, there's going to be a lot of surprises on it. Yeah, cool, um, cool. That's fun. What, what's, what's strange about this one, though, versus 2017 is I think like all the barbecue fan guys and girls out there, like who knew all the new hit places, just assumed that one of them was going to be in number one mm-hmm. on all those top 10 slots last time around. So I think they were probably more surprised to see a place like Snow's at the top, Franklin number two, you know, yeah. places that have been around and, and have that big reputation. And then, you know, this time around, you know, we've got, uh, it's just so much incredible barbecue that's opened up since that last list that I think yeah. people are going to be surprised at, uh, you know, not only the top 10, but uh, also uh, how much turnover there is in the top 50 in general. Yeah. Cause I've gone, I, I make the list and you know, I, I'm, I'm crazy. And so I've gone through that. I've seen so many places that are closed. There's a number of places that are closed from that 2017 list. And yeah. then al- also too, there's a lot of places. Was it, what was the, was a criteria had had to be open before 2021 or, or was there, I, I forget. Really, it. Um, no, I mean, for the, for the top 10, we generally look at, you've got to be open for like, you know, a, a year, a close year. to a year. Like you need to have, showing that you've got staying power you're not some like food truck that opened up two months ago yeah yeah, yeah. um as far as in general like you know we we've sent out our tasting team and they have a, a schedule that they need to meet um to get back scores mm-hmm. to us and i mean if you're not open by then um yeah then you know i'm not i'm not going to come out like this week and and check on it like then mm-hmm. you just be hopeful that you know i i will certainly be around before the 2023 25 <laughs> best new barbecue joint list uh yeah i mean i was searching this time around uh, i'm 43 now i'm like 47 i'm 47 am i gonna be able to i was actually you know what's like, so, that's hilarious i was thinking i'm like is daniel gonna be 70 this? like 70 in doing this like how is this like well like mentally can you still already well, well, the it's, plan not the, it's not the mentally thing it's just the I mean, I can't eat as much barbecue as I, I can't eat it as many barbecue joints as I used to. And certainly for the top 10 search, like it's, it is fun to go out and eat barbecue, right? Um, For sure. But when you're doing, going to like three different top 10 places in a day, you're not not able to really truly enjoy a meal. Yeah. Um, You can't, you know, you can't eat all of it. Yeah. Luckily I've had lots of people to travel around with me and share meals. So. Yeah, that's nice. I, I've, yeah. I've noticed that. Is it, is it is it different this time around going to these places? Is it because I had kind of mentioned off like what's it like to be Daniel Vaughn going to these places now as opposed to 2016 or 2000? Yeah, I mean, I, I do get recognized more often. Um, that's for sure. And I think it has to do with just how many of these places have opened mm-hmm. within the last few years. I mean, if if you've opened and your goal is to make it in the top 50, then you're gonna know who i am you're probably gonna know who pat sharp is at texas monthly as well and so yeah i've certainly gotten noticed a whole lot more often but yeah. it, it doesn't always help no i, I know i, mean, I know I, <laughs> but also people people sometimes like i've i've mentioned on the show people this it's a pivotal moment sometimes in their restaurant career or the restaurant's longevity you're coming and maybe doing a tweet or doing something just because it's Texas. It's, and it's not just you, it's just Texas monthly in general has, they have has, has such a power. That's amazing. It's just, it's just, it's fascinating. It's different than anything like Robert Moss has power, but it's, it's a different cause he's covering the South. It's like, it's like you have, yeah, no, it, it, it is like satisfying. I got, um, you know, I, 
just for an example, like I went out to Wade's Barbecue uh, out in Lufkin, Texas, okay. and I, I wrote about Wade's and wrote about that he's, you know, he's a one man show and he's working hard. He doesn't, he can't crank out a whole lot of barbecue because he's got a, uh, he doesn't have all the pit room in the world and he's just one guy, uh, but he's doing his best and he's really putting out some uh-huh. really good barbecue. And he texted me the day after the, um, the review came out. And then the next day he texted me at like 12, 10. And he's like, well, I guess somebody read your article. Like it's all gone. I gotta, <laughs> I gotta make a whole lot more for tomorrow. <laughs> That's so, funny. you know, it's, it's nice to see people who are working hard and, yeah, and like, yeah. how good barbecue mm-hmm. get rewarded for it. Yeah. That's important. And, and, and what I and what I mainly want to talk about, but obviously that that's the big elephant in the room was the Texas barbecue, um, Texas monthly barbecue club and yeah. what it was before kind of a little bit and then what it is now and and all the great stuff about. It. And there's a lot of stuff kind of behind on a paywall. I guess it's a paywall, but a club wall that right. I want to talk about. So, so yeah. what is the Texas monthly barbecue club? Well, uh, yeah, it's like a year long membership um, that you sign up for right now, or uh, we've got it on sale throughout yeah. the, the rest of the summer. So that still includes this month. Okay. And um, yeah, so it's $75 a year right now, rather than the normal 99. Sorry, it's 74 95, right? 74 25, whatever. Uh, <laughs> Something like that. Yeah, I noticed a couple of days ago. It'll be, it'll be less expensive to get it now. And okay. if you do get it now, it obviously includes a, a year subscription, both yeah. digital and in print. Mm-hmm. Of, Texas Which is huge. so uh, probably the second issue you'll get is our barbecue issue so you'll get that showing up to your door and um, yeah you'll be able to see uh, yeah you'll be able to map out everywhere and get your passport mm-hmm. and all that good stuff you get a barbecue free cat yes, yes. uh-huh and um, you also a band- get a bandana a bandana an apron um, you know good outdoor cooking apron for mm-hmm. barbecue um, and um, yeah then you also get uh, access to all this different content and so we're producing content specifically for the club mm-hmm. like different videos with different pit masters on really going into detail on their process for definitely for cooking different things so you know we've gone out to guest family barbecue and yeah, the wings uh, yeah we looked at exactly how to do those wings and even went to flores tortillas yeah i was gonna say uh, that was a wrap that was the one that really like wow that's that like the really smoked fun. brisket fat tortillas and how that process works of making a tortilla which nowadays has become just as important as white bread uh, mm-hmm. in the barbecue community so yeah um all that stuff's included as, as being part of the club you're also in the tmbbq club facebook page uh and you can ask questions there there's uh a bunch of different pitmasters who are in that as well who can answer questions um and then you also the, you have the q courses which i think there's maybe six or seven out there all at the on in this intro i'll put the correct amount but then there's also the burning questions too with pitmasters yes. which there's some overlap in some of those people that you did q courses with but those are killer too those, and there's off the beaten path people right so you know we're just trying to um uh, let these people get their story out there. You know, mm-hmm. what drew them into barbecue and, and what still pushes them today to, to continue on yeah. what is a pretty difficult job. And, you know, um, certainly been made more difficult over the last uh, year and a half. So yeah, it's, it's fun to get some of that inside insight mm-hmm. uh, from each of these folks. Uh, you'll also maybe get a little preview of the Texas monthly top 50. Ah. Uh, Maybe a, a, I was going to ask because I was thinking yeah. maybe that might not, be. A, I mean, you're not going to get it a week ahead of time. Um, probably not even a whole day ahead of time. But yeah, um, there will be an email going out to the TMBBQ club members that um, get a little early jump on, you know, so that hopping, scoop in, hopping nice. in line at your local yeah. barbecue joint that might be uh, newly newly famous. Definitely. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, the one that's going to have a little bit longer line than it had the week before. But it's and also too. If you sign up for this now, you get a chance to actually get the issue because if you're in Los Angeles or New York or somewhere else, you you can order it directly from you guys, but it makes more sense. And it also makes more sense to support Texas Monthly in general. Like I think one time I said, how how do I, how do I get a chance to, I'm like, how do I get a chance to get an issue? And you're like, Kevin, sign up for the, like, like, get a a subscription. I'm like, oh shit, you're right. I should just do that. (laughs) Cause I had it for a long time. I don't know why it like lapsed somehow. Yeah. And it's, you know, it's not exactly expensive either. It's Um, not. And it's a great, it's a great magazine. It's one of the best in the country. I think. Well, thank you. Yeah. 
because there's and there's and I guess maybe it's like if you if in your heart you bleed Texas blood, like it kind of there's a lot of great stories, but they're not all Texas centric. They're people centric. They're right. They're yeah. Shop, yeah. And, you know, we cover the gamut. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, we got certainly plenty of politics, uh, mm. true crime, uh, uh, lots about where to eat and drink, uh, yeah. where to visit, travel. So, yeah, we, we cover it all. Yeah, yeah, and and I'm sure as issues come out, there'll be a lot more things that are topical, like that are happening <laughs> within the world of Texas that, that probably yeah. will be covered in Texas Monthly because it makes sense. You guys have never shied away from doing that, so that's right. And how long have now? How long have you worked for Texas Monthly? Eight years. Eight years. Yeah. So 2013 is when I started. Wow. So uh, yeah, I started off um, really like the month before our 2013. Uh, top 50 list came out. Okay. And then we'll get the, uh, yeah, had this, this is my third one that I've been through. This is, uh, this is certainly the one that I've taken more of a sort of a lead editorial role on than any of the others. And so, yeah, so it's been a, a bit more work other than just driving around and eating barbecue yeah and it, and, it, and do you feel like because like i mentioned off camera too do you think you have the best because everybody tweets you oh dan you have the best job on the planet like do you feel like you have the best job on the planet i yeah i mean it's but it's, it's not a, like easiest it's not like i just go and eat like it's a like, it's a really great silly. job <laughs> yeah. yeah i mean i've said it a million times but really like i would do the research for free it's the writing mm-hmm. part that they pay me for yeah uh you know the sitting down and, and actually putting a story together but yeah i mean it certainly comes with its challenges i mean it's a job every yeah. job has its challenges but um in the end like the the freedom that it provides and not only the uh the barbecue i get to eat but simply being able to have an excuse to travel around the entire state of texas yeah you know i'm working on i think i have like what is it like six counties left i made a map really I made a map at like the end of 20 20- Right at the end of 2019, I made a map and I was going to knock it all out in 2020 of the counties that I was missing. That's amazing. That's And uh, um, there were actually quite a bit more than I thought. There's some really out of the way places in Texas that I, ha- I haven't even been to yet. And so I did a big search as part of my top 50. One of my territories was really just this big area in between um, Lubbock and Wichita Falls. And there were eight counties there that I had never been to. Wow. And some don't have any barbecue joint. I, I wrote about uh, 1802 Barbecue, mm-hmm. which uh, is a food truck that actually services three of the different counties. They, they're in one county one day and one county seat the next day and another the next day. Uh, so they do three days a week of barbecue and, you know, service that whole area there. But uh, yeah, so it gives me a good opportunity to go out and, and meet folks like that talk yeah. to them about their barbecue story. You know, these, these people who, um, you know, they're not doing it for, uh, for the glory. They're not, um, they, they don't have the ease of working inside their own brick and mortar location. Like, yeah. They're on the road cooking barbecue in their food truck. Um, Which is a hustle. It's a, it's a yes, grind. It's, it, the, it is. It's it crazy. Is. And it's interesting too, because I think, and tell me if I'm wrong at the beginning, this was about the food. But now it's more about the people and then the food. Like it seems like it's it's there's a blur. I think it wasn't. Yeah, yeah. I mean, certainly the the way I've written has changed pretty dramatically. Yeah, and I, I don't you don't you feel like you're a stronger writer? Like I, you know, you don't want to pat your own back, but I feel like you've put in the reps. Well, I mean, really... the only way to get better is to just do more of it, and mm-hmm. so I've done a lot of it at this point. Uh, I my son is struggling in school right now. He's ten, and he's really struggling with writing and. Um, you know, I got to, I tell them like, Hey, I'm, I, this is what I do for a living now, but I didn't know how to write. Uh, and, you know, I try to coach him and, and give him just some of the basics, but yeah, uh, I, I learned pretty, you know, after, a, a, I don't know, maybe a year or two, I learned that the stories about just the food are pretty boring mm-hmm. and uh, they don't really give you any insight as to what really drives these people or what their story is or where they came from or why they want to do barbecue or what motivates them day to day. And so nowadays I don't write about a place unless I've interviewed the mm-hmm. owner or the pit master uh, or, or somebody there at the restaurant to really get their story about what that place is and how it fits into the larger picture of Texas barbecue. 
And that, that's what that makes it so much more interesting. And also it gives people something to attach to when they visit. That's, and that's kind of like one of the reasons why I'm doing these is that they get to meet the person before they visit. And so they kind of feel like they, they know them a little bit and it, it just, I, th I think it opens up a window and then it's the, the stories are so similar, but they're also so different. And your story too, what was, and I've always wanted to ask you, what was that first barbecue bite or, or restaurant that really made you want to go on this path? It was Louis Miller barbecue and Taylor. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I went on a, a central Texas road trip with a friend and uh, it was, a, we started out on Friday night with a couple of uh, decent places. And then we started Saturday morning. Our first stop was Louis Miller and we were sitting on opposite sides of the table, sharing a tray of barbecue. And like, I didn't really even know back then that they were famous for the beef rib. So I don't even think we got one. I think we got like a pork rib and a link of sausage and a slice of brisket. Cause okay. we had like six places that we were going to go to that day and several the next day as well. And yeah, we just took a bite of that and we're like, Oh wow. Something this is what everybody's been talking about. <laughs> uh, this is like, this is now a different kind of food. Like mm -hmm. this is, I get why like they, you know, at that time we were using Texas monthly as our guide. Uh, I wasn't working for them at all. And it's like, yeah, this is why they're putting these places on the list that are down here. Uh, they really are that much different and that much better than anything at, at the time that we had had in Dallas. And that mm -hmm. road trip was 2006. And so, yeah, it was, it was really that morning at Louis Miller. Now afterwards we had like, we just kept getting like hit after hit after hit, like, uh, you know, there was Kreitz Market and, and Smitty's and Blacks and like we were City Market and Luling. No, yeah. actually City Market and Luling was closed by the time we got there. So I had to, I had to wait uh, till another road trip to try it. But anyway, it was just like one hit after the next. And it's like, wow, this, this well, and is... also you were an architect at the time, yeah. right? So yes. yes, the structures themselves must have been interesting and intriguing. And Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, still like you can't go to, Lockhart and not go into Smitty's. Oh, just, oh. just uh, you know, get a link of sausage, even if you're not hungry, get a link of sausage. Yes, yes. And and sit down and just take in that entire building. It's yeah, just an and walk and walk place. it. And yeah, it's just there's and there's there's so many iconic photos, but it's just being there and seeing the fire and how date like it's there's so many things that I'm like that would not work like in a normal, like it's, there's so many grandfathered things. That's yeah. Gonna, that's really good. Yeah. It's, well, that, and that's one of the things, that's one of the reasons that barbecue is so special. Like if you think about any, if you picture any restaurant kitchen, um, you know, you've ever worked in or seen on TV or anything mm -hmm. like that, and then compare it with your average pit room, like, you know, <laughs> it's kind of grimy. It's dirty. Yeah. It's, uh, but that is, what you know when you go eat barbecue like it's what you want to see you want to mm -hmm. see that really heavily used pit room and um you know these massive machines tanks uh -huh. bricks yeah that... um, made out of steel and bricks and whatever and you know you put a piece of meat in them and, and transform it over mm -hmm. whatever 16 hours and it's just still an amazing thing if you uh, yeah if you if you bother to pay attention yeah. And it's, a, and it's something too, that you could see people getting burnt out on And it's amazing how many people have lasted this long by doing it. And I think that's why people get creative with their menus or maybe open a second place or do things just because you need that because it's, it's a little monotonous, it, it, but it's also yeah. the people maybe meeting the people and, and, and seeing what their reaction and showing them the pit room that that's that part makes it make it more interesting is and it, yeah I, I can't wait to see the thing but i also wanted to talk before i forget because i have a million questions the uh, texas monthly barbecue festival is going on the road this year so mm -hmm. that's a that's yeah, important people might not know that yeah we've got three different stops uh so we'll be in lubbock um down in brownsville and over in tyler uh so you know we've got the no, city of brown october yeah in october um and so the city of Brownsville is hosting us. So we'll be bringing barbecue joints together in the, in downtown. Um, Stanley's out in Tyler is going to host us again. We'll be bringing several restaurants in together mm -hmm. and uh, the same up in Lubbock where Eddie Mays will be the host. So it's, there's, there's smaller events than what we've usually done mm -hmm. as a big festival. Um, you know, but for that reason, they're going to be more intimate. You're going to have uh, more interaction 
with each of the pit masters uh, who are going to be attending. Um, and you won't have to fight so much for, for all the great food. Yeah. And it won't, yeah. And you, you won't have to go to Austin. You can go to one that potentially is closer to you. Right. It's and like the anywhere, but Austin tour, right? Like we, <laughs> we, we're in, we've been in Austin. We did 10 years in a row. Uh, took off last year, of course. Um, it was virtual last year. The, the virtual in my backyard last year. Yes. Yeah. And Aaron um, with his so, hair, Aaron with his crazy hair. So th- thankfully I don't have to have that set up in the backyard <laughs> this time around. I can get out yeah, and yeah, that's nice. uh, go visit with some folks. I'm really looking forward to it. And there's tickets. Uh, I'll put a link below. And I also did a, yes. a blog piece. So there's uh, tickets for all three events that the Evie Mays one is the most expensive and it's, it's a, it's a, because it's includes a little bit more, right? Wasn't it a, a more of a, a different inc- meal? To dip- yeah. It, in, it includes more um, the meal itself and the, uh, and the presentation part of it as well. So, um, and you know, also if you sign up for the TMBBQ club, when we hopefully have our regular festival next year, um, you know, you'll be right there first in line to be able to purchase tickets for it uh, before perfect. anybody else. Yeah. That's a, that's fingers crossed that that happens. And I talked to uh, Isaac and Ashley from pit forks recently, and I, they're very excited to be at the, at the event. So it's, it's going to be fun and it's got some new people. And then on each one, I think there's secret or guest people that might show up that aren't on the list. Yeah. Well, um, well, in East Texas, so we had a, a special guest and well, I, I can tell you now it's going to be, uh, we just hadn't gotten all the details worked out yet with Holy Smoke Barbecue down in Huntsville. Okay. And so okay. Um, formerly Church Barbecue, the New Zion Baptist Missionary Church fame. Um, yeah. And, you know, they were reopened now and have been for uh, almost a year. And so, yeah, they're, they're reopened and we wanted to be able to celebrate that and have some folks be introduced to their barbecue if they haven't made it to Huntsville yet. Oh, that's nice. That's awesome. So that's, so which, which one are they going to? They're going to be East Texas. Texas Uh, Yeah. They're, they're making the longer haul up to Tyler. Okay. Um, And so then I talked to Stephen Joseph at Riverport barbecue and he's going to be there as well. And uh, so Stephen's Lebanese. And so I've Uh gotten him to maybe tweak some of his favorites and, put a little Lebanese twist on them. So I think everybody's going to enjoy that. Uh, um, and he's going to enjoy making I didn't it. know that. Oh. Yeah. He's going to enjoy having a little bit of fun with some items that I think will be popular at the festival that, uh, you know, he, I don't know, maybe it'll convince him that he can sell these things uh, in his restaurant be... in Little Jefferson, Texas. Yeah, that's nice. And I think isn't Brian Bingham coming to one of them? And I don't think he's listed as. Yeah, Sunbird Barbecue. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yes. I think that he's, he's which one he'd be at the he's in Tyler. Yes. The Tyler one. Okay. okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, so that's, so those are, and, and they're those, those two, they're not that expensive in general, but those two, the two, the Brownsville and the Tyler one are very inexpensive. That's like, it's a great price for if, and I'm sure those will sell out. So people, you won't be getting, unless there's some tickets at the door, you should, people need to order tickets as soon as possible. It's not an event, right? It's, and there's going to be great food and a great variety as well. Yeah. And you'll be there. I will. I'll be at each one. Of course. Excellent. That's cool. That's fun. So what's, so then the rest of the year, Oh, I wanted to ask, did you go to, was that devil's mountain? Was that in? Oh, devil's tower. Devil's tower. That's yeah. from close encounters, right? That's the, it is. Yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. That was a, what a cool. Yeah. I was on, a, I was on a big road trip with my son. So <laughs> I had to um, ask you about that. I picked him up. Uh, it's a long story, but I picked him up at camp in Minnesota and uh, we had oh, two weeks. We had two weeks to, to travel wherever the heck we wanted on a road trip. And we decided to go west. And we went to the Badlands, uh, the Black Hills, Devil's Tower, Yellowstone, oh. uh, Teddy Roosevelt National Park. Uh, yeah, I mean, we, we saw a whole lot of national parks. That's right. And neat. a whole lot of wildlife. And we saw the Devil's Tower. And uh, as, as you might guess, we uh, did go ahead and rent close encounters of third kind and watch it in the hotel room afterwards so, nice did yeah. he enjoy it like does it resonate does it work with kids these days it uh it's an odd movie there's it's different we got that. to the devil's tower part i gotta say yeah it's an odd movie it's also pretty slow paced yeah uh, that has a slow it, i watched it maybe three years ago build. Yeah. yeah it's got a slow build up to uh you know up to the devil's tower part and trying to trying to figure out what this all these different structures he's building yeah, and shaking out of <laughs> yeah, mashed potatoes crazy. and dirt and whatever else he gets his hands on. Yeah. And I think it also something, I think there's something like these, the Bermuda triangle somehow 
I think there's a squadron from the Bermuda Triangle that's connected to it at the end. Maybe you probably yeah. didn't even get to that. Part well, one of the things that I did learn was, I think it was in the forties. There was a guy who, uh, he was a daredevil and he parachuted, uh, from an airplane and landed at the top of devil's oh, really? stunt. And I, I guess it's not quite as like big and flat up there as it looks <laughs> from down on the ground. Oh, interesting. And he lands on top and he dropped his rope that he was going to lower to like climb oh, no. off. And he was up on the top of Devil's Tower for six days until a climber, uh -huh. um, though they found a climber who was willing to come travel and climb up and oh my god, yeah, <laughs> That's climb a up cool the side of Devil's Tower and rescue this guy from the top. So yeah, wow. six days at the top of Devil's Tower. That is awesome. My last okay. question is: in, in Oklahoma, was there some place that you went to with all these trees that looked gorgeous? It was beautiful. Was it Oklahoma? I think it was. Oh, I went to the Wichita Mountains. Yeah, oh, Wichita uh, Mountains. Wichita Mountains. Yeah, that, I, I wrote about that for Texas Monthly. Mm -hmm. It was one of the first articles, maybe the first article I've written for Texas Monthly that wasn't just about mm -hmm. barbecue. Um, I even ate barbecue on the trip and didn't even write about it. <laughs> um, so what happened? That's amazing. But yeah, Wichita Mountains. It is, uh, as I said, it's the my my daughter joked with me that the best thing about Oklahoma is how close it is to Texas. Um, <laughs> Interesting. That's a great way. But I think the best thing about Oklahoma is probably the Wichita Mountains. It's a really yeah. awesome place to visit. Yeah, it definitely made like I definitely bookmarked that and I put it on a list. I'm creating a list of places I'd like to visit. And that just it just looked magical almost. It was really beautiful. And so and it's and there's a Wichita, but there's Wichita Falls, obviously, in Texas, but this mm -hmm. is Wichita. Right. This is the Wichita Mountains. Yeah. It's um, just north of Lawton, Oklahoma. Wow. That's cool. Well, I'll put a link to that article. I guess <laughs> there'll be a lot of links below. <laughs> or maybe I need to do 17 companion blogs. But thank you again for everything that you do. And I know that, you know, this when this does come out, there's going to be joy as well as, you know, controversy. But you, you welcome that because that's, you know, it's discussion and debate. And that's what it's all about, people. That's what barbecue sort of is, like what your favorite spot is. Do you have, well, do you have a favorite place that's just like a, that is not on the list at all, but like for like a chopped beef sandwich? Uh, I used to, um, but oh, yeah, Max, like close, Max, yeah, Max Barbecue closed in Dallas. That was really my go-to place. And Billy McDonald um, decided yeah. to close it down and his, his partner, Deb Schultz. And they decided to close it down because, I mean, they just, they've been doing this that's been their entire life for years and years and years, decades. And yeah. they're the only ones who were doing it. They don't have a, there's not another generation uh, coming up after them. And they had been trying to sell the business. Yeah. Uh, they weren't able to sell it. Weren't able to sell the real estate either for what they wanted. So they're leasing huh. out the building now, but yeah, I just drove by it the other day and you know, it still has, it. it still says max. It's still got the flag out. still got the same clothes sign that he puts up when it's closed, but I just know that, I hope it's not the, like going to become a Halloween store or something like that. The closed sign is not going to come down. So, oh, so it's, yeah, is there a place that you like, like somewhere across Texas that you go to? Because I'm kind of writing, I'm working on a piece about chopped beef and, and how it's kind of underrated. And, and I know you've mm -hmm. done stuff on chopped beef before. Well, I mean, I it's not just chopped beef, but going to the bodacious chain, really any of them, and getting the Melman sandwich which is you just take a sausage link and brisket and chop it all up together oh. and put that on a bun. Uh, yeah. That sounds the, really good. The Mel man is certainly a, a nice thing to get. And you'll find that sandwich in other places in East Texas as well, but certainly it was the bodacious chain that popularized it. Oh, interesting. Well, again, thanks for taking the time for this. And I, I know that you're, it's going to, you're going to get a lot of, uh, a request for interviews after this comes out, but I wanted to make sure that people did sign up for the Texas monthly barbecue club, because it's not, again, it's not that expensive and it, you, there's so much you get and all that swag is really cool. And then there's all the, you know, the, all the research and all the different things that all the content that you've put behind. And you'll, that have, and you'll have the top 50 list show up yeah. in print at your front door at your front door, which is very important. And uh, it's, it's, it's such a, like, I have, it's such a prize. I want to be able to somehow get some of those old issues that Pat showed me. I'm sure. I don't yeah. know where they exist, I, but I've got them all in a box. Do um, you? Yeah. All of them together. Yeah. And do you guys have a, a specific artist or a photographer that you guys use for this? Or is it a bunch of different people? It's a group of different people. Uh, yeah. So we're going to have, it's going to be a very photo heavy issue as well. So. Makes sense. We're, um, 
I think our photography team, our art team told me that there's going to be like 22, 22 of the top 50 will be featured uh, with a photo. Oh, cool. Um, and then we'll have other photo essays. We'll have big, beautiful photos of a bunch of great desserts around Texas uh, for Texas barbecue. Um, yeah. It's, yeah. So it's, 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 a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a huge, it's not just a list. It's, it's not just know. a list. There's, there's, there's so much. That, that this is, is the barbecue issue. Uh, yeah. Lots more stories about barbecue in there, which uh, now I got to go write some. <laughs> right, cool. <laughs> well, good luck today. And uh, thanks, thanks again for having me on. Have a good one. Take care. All right. Thanks. You too. See you. Bye.